December 28th, 2021. And um, I had just watched the video about um, just what we should be doing going forward. And we were talking about the various things, but just as, as I was watching that video, just the word occupy came to mind as far as what we should be doing um, as believers and as those who are um, risen up in Christ and, and Holy Spirit feeling what we should be doing as we go forward, as we contemplate all the things that happen during this year and in, in years past, and, and just consider what we should be doing as we move into the new year. So, what really has stuck out to me is, is just the key word, the key word of occupy. Um, so I'm just going to go in and, and uh, tell you a little bit of um, some various verses that, that speak to that, that particular way of being, but also I'm going to define occupy. Um, because I think a lot of people just see that word and they just glance over it and don't really realize that that word has a lot of meaning. So first I'm going to go into the in, into the book of Luke and talk about that parable of the ten minas, um, those ten coins that, that uh, the master of the house gave to the various servants. And um, he gave that, he gave that, the, the, that sum of money to those people, and he left up to left it up to them to uh, do or not do. Um, and then after, when he returned, he called them to question as far as what they did with what he gave them. So I'm just going to go ahead and read that parable first, and then. Um, Talk a little bit more. Verse 11. And they heard these things, and he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Even back then they were waiting for the kingdom, but never have we been so close to the kingdom appearing as we are now. Verse 12, he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten dollars. And he said unto them, Occupy until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he had returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given that money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. So then came the first man, saying, Lord, your dollar has gained ten dollars. And he said unto him, Well, you good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, have I, I will give you authority over ten cities. And the second man came, saying, Lord, your dollar has gained five dollars. And he said likewise to him, Be uh, be you also reigning over five cities. And another man came, saying, Lord, behold, here is your dollar, which I have kept laid up in a cloth. For I fear you, because you are an austere man, and you take up what you have not laid down, and you harvest that which you did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of your own mouth will I judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, taking up what I had not laid down, and reaping that which I did not sow. Therefore, then, 
gave not you my money to the bank? Or I'm sorry, why did you not give my money that I gave you unto the bank? That at my coming I might at least have received interest from it. And he had said unto them that stood by, Take from him the dollar and give it unto him that has ten dollars. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten dollars. For I say unto you that unto every one which has shall be given, and from him that has not, even that which he has shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not, which refused that I would reign over them, bring those men here and slay them before me. In this passage of the money being given to those particular servants, two of them actually did take what the Lord gave them and, and put it to use and actually uh, received a return for, for the investment. One, you know, he kept what was given to him, but, you know, chose not to, to do anything with it. He just sat on it and, and um, claimed to be fearful that he would have re retribution for, you know, if he lost the money. And then others, the other, you know, servants, they, they basically said, we don't want any part of you. We have no interest in having your ruling over us. So the Lord did, in fact, reward the two that actually made a return for the investment. But he actually penalized the other men that, that chose you know, not to do anything with what God had given them or what, with what the uh, master had given them. The master gave those servants instruction to take the gifts and provision he gave them and occupy the land until he returned from his journey. This passage has both the obvious meaning for the unsaved eye and the deep meaning intended for the Holy Spirit filled saints. By saints, I'm just using that word to mean or refer to the end times team or army of those who've been appointed with the task of ushering in the kingdom. When heaven and earth will kiss once more and the two become one. Uh, this isn't an easy task because each one has their own personal battles and processes that God uses to train the individual for service. In that service before we join in unity to the duty that we've been given or to those tasks and duties that we have been given. That process is hard and many don't make it for various reasons. Um, the most prevalent reason being the continuous onslaught from the devil to distract, discourage, and make us blame God for all the trouble in our lives and then give up. But we must also in this process grab hands and encourage one another and remind one another that we are not in this alone and don't dare give up. Most especially as we realize that it is at the most dark and dreary point just before dawn. So this is when we must encourage one another and also remind one another of our mission that the master had given us. That mission is to occupy. Now occupy is a very complex word that has a lot of meaning. So what I want to do now is to just define it before I proceed. Occupy. It says to reside or have one's place of business in, say, a, a, like a building. Or it can say the 
apartment that she occupies is in such and such a city. Now, words that are very synonymous to that would be to live in, to inhabit, to be the tenants of, or to lodge in a particular place. It also can mean to fill or take up a space or time. Uh, you have two long windows occupied almost the whole wall. Okay, so, you know, that's just a, a physical representation looking at a wall that has two windows. Those windows are actually occupying that space. Another synonymous thing would be to take up, fill, fill up, cover, extend over. Uh, it can also mean to be situated in or at a place or position in a system or hierarchy. It also means to hold a position or job. Also means to be in, fill, or have. Fill or preoccupy. Um, preoccupy would be referring to the mind or thoughts. Um, it says that her mind was occupied with alarming questions. It can also be to engage, um, busy, employ, or absorb. It also means to keep, um, that's referring to someone, busy and active. It says that Sarah occupied herself taking the cups of coffee over to the sink. It means also to take control of a place, especially a country. Um, that would be by military conquest or settlement. Um, it says the region was occupied by Britain during the, during World War I. Synonyms would be to capture, seize, take possession of, conquer, or invade. Also, to enter, take control of, stay in, and referring to a building, um, illegally or often forcibly, especially as a form of protest. Um, it also refers to the, um, as an example, you would have workers that occupied a factory. Um, it's probably workers on strike occupying a factory. So, with that understanding comes clarification of the mission at hand. So what is God's will for one's life? Um, he does say repeatedly in the Bible to occupy until he returns. The Lord says to occupy until he returns. Just as in that parable um, of the ten sums of money, um, it says minas, or in some versions it says minas, Another version it says pounds, but I just use dollars just to make it more simple and more applicable to our you know, monetary system. So anyways, um, the key word of that particular parable is to occupy. So how do we occupy? God's word says that we're to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Um, and that's referring to Matthew 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Switching over to Mark 10, verse 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing you lack, go and sell the things that have become your idol, um, your fortune, personal status and fame, or that would be referring to fortune, status and fame, and give to the poor. And you shall have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross, and follow me. Now also from Luke, Luke chapter 9, I'm starting at verse 23. And he said unto all of them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever 
which will save his life will lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same will save it. For what is a man benefiting if he has gained the whole world and loses himself or be cast into the deep? So how do we know that the time has come to ready ourselves for the duty at hand? Well, at this point, we do have many prophecies in the Bible that will guide us. And also, there are many prophecies. There, there's much coming out in the in the prophetic realm here that is is pointing us to these to the the crucial point in time that we are actually existing in, and so many things that have happened that that actually back all of these things up. So, in the book of Mark, chapter thirteen, we have Peter, James, and John, and Andrew who ask Jesus to determine the signs of the end of the age. So it's starting at verse 4. It says, Tell us when these things shall be, that what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled. And Jesus answered them and said, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And when you hear of wars and rumors of war, do not be troubled, for such thing must be, but the end is not yet. For the nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be earthquakes in, I'm sorry, earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and trouble. These are the beginnings of sorrow. But take heed to yourselves, for they will deliver you up before councils and synagogues, or you know, de delivered up before deliberation. And you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings, and so judges for my sake, for testimony against them. The gospel must first be published amongst all the nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up before men, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither should you premeditate what to say. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour by the Holy Spirit, you speak. For it is not ye that speaks, it is not you that speaks, but the Holy Ghost speaking through you. Now the brother shall betray brother unto them, and the father betray the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures unto the end shall the same be saved. Now I'm going to refer over to Matthew 24, Matthew chapter 24, and that's referring to the uh, coming of the Son of Man, and starting at verse 29, which says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 28, starting at verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you, 
and lo, I am with you all the way, even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So we have that task. We have that task to go forth and, and, and show show that, that that the Lord is real. Show them in, their, in, in our lives and, and demonstrate, demonstrate the fact that the Lord is real. Demonstrate that fact even that he has changed us and that he can change those people that, that are out there that don't even realize that he exists. We, oddly enough, we, he would think that everyone would know that he, he what, what, what God is all about and know about God and know the truth. But really, you know, we don't. There's so many people out there that don't. You know, and oddly enough, we went to the store today and there was the, the kid at the cash register that he, oh, I, you know, I read a couple of chapters of the Bible, you know, when I was a kid, but, you know, I don't really know anything about him, you know. And, and that was a wonderful time that we had ministering to this guy or it, it, because he had nothing. He knew a little bit. Thank the Lord, he what had been his mind hadn't been polluted with, with negative things. You know, he just thought of the Bible as just like a kid's story that he remembered from when he was in, you know, as a child. But you know, that still the door was open. You know, and we we you know shared a little bit of the gospel with him, and and hopefully that that will that little piece will take hold, and and he will be have that desire to learn more. But that's what we're supposed to do. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to do everything. I mean, but just that little bit, when we get a chance, when the opportunity arises and presents itself, take that opportunity and, and run with it, you know? So, like I said, you know, that key word that, that has just really stuck out really has been to occupy. I mean, it, occupy doesn't mean sit in the house and, and do nothing and watch TV all day long. It, it means, you know, get with the Lord, get ourselves right, and study and learn what we're supposed to, you know, learn and make sure that we're not spreading misinformation or anything like that. You know, we, we need to know the gospel for ourselves, and but also we need to get out there and and, and share Share the good word. Share the good news. Because you never know who you're going to run into. You're never going to, you, you, you never know if that person that's, that's checking out your groceries knows absolutely nothing about the Lord because we live in a society that's decided that it wants to turn its back on the Lord. But you've got young people out there who are looking for they're looking for some kind of guidance. They're looking for some kind of light. And there's nothing out there for them. But we can provide that light for them. Even if it is just a little candle, we can still, you know, give them a little bit of a spark and let and let him run with it, you know. So thanks for your time and uh, God bless. Have a wonderful day, evening, or whatever you're doing. <laughs> Take care. God bless.